Today we are going to talk about a crucial topic called dependency inversion principle. And as a starting point, I'm going to use the Ryan's video explanation of dependency injection and inversion of control topic. We are not going to touch the dependence injection and inversion con of control, but uh, I really like his approach to explain something from the very beginning. And that's why I give, gave him a like. You can do this also. I'm going to put this video in my video description as well. So he starts, so Ryan starts explaining what is a dependency. Uh, and if A uses message from B, that means we have introduced the dependencies. There is some dependency between A and B, or A depends on B. Depending on, uh, doesn't, that doesn't mean import, um, imports or calls directly, but rather it's a more general idea that some module knows or needs something, something from another model. So if A knows about B, that means that we have introduced a dependency. Or if a if module A or class A needs some message from B, it means that we have introduced a dependency as well. Uh, putting it in a more Pythonic way, if you are even going to import the class B and use it as a uh, type hint. In your, uh, in your class A, that means you have already introduced a dependency between A and B. So it's just type pins, you know, um, but still it's a dependence. It's a valid dependency between A and B. Um, yeah, the next is Ryan uh, had a great jo uh, job on writing simple example and it's in Java. And what I did is I've grabbed this Java code and translated it to the Python. And let's explain um, the Python code, the Python sample code here. So we have uh, IOC, so it's from the original video. Uh, this is a called inversion of control class. We have no inversion of control class container here. We have no dependency injection mechanism because we are not going to talk about that. But it's just bare translation from Java to the Python and it has a class user. So user, the user class is uh, instantiates, instantiates the MySQL database class and use its persist method to insert, it's a dummy insert to the MySQL database and it's going to just print something and return some string. I've changed it a bit, uh, just renamed the IOC class to DIP, the dependency inversion principle. We are going to remove it because we don't really need it. But uh, here, to be more realistic, we have this connect method. It's really opening the connection to the MySQL database. Just simulation. You need to imagine that we are opening a true connection to the MySQL database. And it has some flag. So initially it's false. But if we have connected su successfully, it's going to be true. And we are checking if connected, we are going to insert the data to the, uh, to the MySQL database. In user, in user constructor, in user class, we are still instantiating the MySQL database and we are mm, connect directly connecting to the database in this user class. And now this code opens up a window to another discussion that first our discussion is tight coupling and loose coupling. As particularly now, we are uh, introduced a tight coupling between users and the MySQL database. Why it's bad to have a tight coupling? Because you are introducing untestable code, first of all. What is an untestable code? In our, um, in our topic. So untestable code is that you can't open a connection to the live database or putting it in a different way. If you decide to test the user uh, class or the addition persisting the data, 
you need to have a live database and a true connection to this database which is a bad for testing you can't uh, simply or trivially mock the database here uh, but it's uh, doable so we are going to change the way uh, how we can uh, do it in uh, in a proper way so that when you have a tight coupling you need to achieve some loose coupling and how i achieve the loose coupling here we can uh, we can accept the database object as an argument for the user constructor so database the mysql database object is just injected into the user class and is directly used uh, is uh, use the database persist method and in dip class we are just uh, instantiating the database. We are connecting to the database and passing this self database object, the MySQL database object to the user database. Now that means that we can uh, test it in a more easy way, which is mocking the database. So basically this is the simplest way we can achieve here we, we mock the database we mock the persist return value to return back the string and then we just pass to the user class this mock database and checking if after addition of uh, user add we have the same string as uh, as a, a, a as a return value from the persist and then we are checking this mock database persist asset called. This will ensure that uh, this mock databases uh, persist method called at least once. This is a testable code, but this one is not a testable code. So when you go from tight coupling to the loose coupling, you are getting uh, the more testable code. This is the one a uh, positive way of writing the code in a proper way. Uh, the next change for for our code, I'm just wiped out this DIP class. I've introduced a factory uh, function or factory method, and everything is going to be done in this factory method. So we are instantiating the MySQL database, we're connecting, again, we're passing to the user and calling uh, the factory method as usual. This is a uh, so more granular way, I, I guess. Yes, the, but one day, in a good one day, our business or technical decision maker, I'd say, decides that we need a Postgres database. And a Postgres database, Postgres database support. And this is the exact copy of the MySQL database, except that we are just changing some dummy strings to reflect that hey we are using the pg database you are not going to touch uh, the class user and uh, because it's accepting some database right and uh, you are instantiating the pg database and passing uh, this uh, then opening the connecting connection to the postgres and pass this data uh, database object to the user and it will work yes pg has persisted ever some data but if you were using some kind of static type checker, such by type, it will fail because uh, the expected the expected database type, so wrong argument types, uh, the fail is indicates that you have passed the wrong argument types because a PG database is not a MySQL database. They are totally different uh, how to say entities. They are totally different ideas. And that's why you can't just replace and pass uh, to the class user a PG database. That means it's opening another door to our topic and that means we need to invert the dependency between our user and between the databases database implementations and now i'm going to back to the uh, wikipedia and here uh, so dependency inversion principle states High-level modules should not import anything from low-level modules both should depend on abstractions 
This is sounds some cryptic, but stay tuned. The NASA um, article states that high-level modules should not depend on low-level modules. Both should, both should depend on abstractions. So we need to invert. We need to invert the dependency between high-level modules or high-level code portions and between the low-level modules or low-level low -level code portions. So what is a, the, question, the next question is what's the high-level and what's the low-level? Putting it in a simple way, the high-level is a code section or code portions or class or functions or modules, anything that our business cares about that uh, some portion of the code is crucial for our project uh, and uh, for our sample uh, code is uh, the class user is a high level code because the addition of the user data or persisting of the user data is crucial for us that's why it's it's a high level code portion uh, but what's a low level? Low level is a detail. The database is a low level because we don't care how the data is going to be persisted. We care that it should be uh, persisted. So the high level code is a user class and the persisting the user data. The low level is <clears throat> this database dependency or this MySQL database and PG database class. This is a low level. And this principle states that the high level modules should not depend on low level modules. That means effectively that the user class should not depend on either MySQL database nor this uh, PG database. And they should depend on what? On abstractions. So that's why we are going to use uh, abstract classes to create an abstract methods and abstract class. We are introducing the dependency inversion principle here. I've created the class database. It's a ABC and it has this connect and persist methods. Both are abstract methods. The MySQL database implements this database abstract class. The PG database implements this database abstract class. And the class user now accepts the database as an interface or as a uh, abstract, as an abstraction. And now the high level code depends on abstraction. And our low level code also depends on abstraction. This is a dependency inversion principle in a most simplest way. And now if you run this Point type check. It's going to pass. No errors found because we have inverted direct dependency between high level and low level code sections. That's how uh, the dependency inversion principle works. The second section says that abstraction, abstractions should not depend on details. Details should depend on abstraction. We already achieved this because the detail is concrete implementations of uh, the abstract classes. And indeed, the database uh, abstract class doesn't care what you are doing inside the MySQL database or inside the PG database. And even you are going to add some functionality, extra functionality to the PG database, it's not going to affect the abstraction itself. The abstractions not depends on details. Details depends on the abstraction. This is, uh, in general, we have achieved two points or two sections of dependence inversion principle. And how to test it? Well, is enough. You can easily mock it and say that uh, this is a PG, this is a OS scale, and it's going to accept any kind of the database because because the abstract abstractions, the abstraction has this persist, persist method and all details, all subclasses, I would say, are implemented this persist, persist method. We are pretty done on our explanation, but the final thing that I, we can do here 
is uh, to to uh, to introduce some builder or configuration mapper to our code, which accepts a DB type as a string, and it maps this string in, in, uh, representation to the actual database instantiation in a class uh, actual class instances, and then we just uh, map the DB type and call the appropriate DB connect and return back the database object and then pass to the to the user as a database. So this is how we can achieve uh, we can achieve the dependency inversion principle. So wrapping up, we have introduced uh, the, what is the dependency. Then we have talked about the tight coupling and the loose coupling and how it affects the testability of the code. Then we have introduced uh, the problem about supporting multiple mm, databases and how indeed this dependence inversion principle helped us to achieve our goal. And again, it's now it's uh, easy to add an extra implementation of the databases. It's easy to test and the code is less error prone, I would say, if it's appropriate to say. So that's it. I've tried to explain this topic. We have, we are going to have a multiple sections related to this solid principles and the dependency inversion principle is a D for the solid. Uh, uh, that's it and see you in the next video. Bye.